Welcome and thank you for joining us for the Sideshow Collectibles panel at San Diego Comic-Con 2009. Our creative team is here to give you an inside look at some of the new product designs and concepts and new licensing announcements for stuff we're working on coming out later this year in early 2010. We've got a lot of stuff to show you, so sit back, relax, and here we go. G.I. Joe, a real American hero. If you've been following our Ask Sideshow Q&As, which are posted on our site on a roughly weekly basis, you might know that we're working on Beachhead and Firefly for the 12-inch line, and we've recently announced Duke. We've had a great time doing the 12-inch G.I. Joe figures, so we've decided to expand our license to include dioramas, premium format, and statues. So we've been doing dioramas forever, and we got comfortable with the scale of dioramas, and they become so popular that we've decided to push to get the license for G.I. Joe dioramas as well, which is really cool because now you see some of those famous face-offs. We can do stuff like Storm Shadow versus Snake Eyes. We can do things like Flint versus Zartan. Uh, it's just great. It gives us so much more possibilities of, of stories to tell. For Indiana Jones, we're continuing on with our 12-inch and premium format lines, and we're proud to announce that we're expanding with a diorama series. We've done something from each of the Indiana Jones films except for Temple of Doom. That's getting ready to change. We've got dioramas and premium formats coming out. First up will be a cool diorama from Temple of Doom with Indiana Jones fighting Mola Ram, Cliffside, and uh, we'll be showing you more of that in the coming months. We're also expanding with a couple of cool prop replicas. The Fertility Idol from classic Raiders of the Lost Ark and uh, it comes on a very nice little display base reminiscent of the pedestal from which Indy steals it. We're also working on a quarter scale, highly detailed Ark of the Covenant. Now, I can't guarantee you it'll come with spirits, but you never know. Avatar is the most exciting project we're working on this year. It's James Cameron's next film and an absolute technological wonder. Such as involvement in the project involves a series of maquettes and premium format figures. The Sideshow development team will be focused on the premium format figures based on the key alien creatures in the film. In Avatar, the human soldiers have these mechs that are called the amp suits. Um, they're real kind of big, blocky, robot-looking suits that they pilot. And uh, they kind of trudge through the jungle. And they're not like, like a power loader from Aliens, which was very kind of clunky the way they move. They're very articulated. And they, they carry guns over their, over their shoulders. They've got knives they pull out. Now, in the film, the majority of the amp suits moving around are CG. Um, but Legacy Effects did build a full-size piece. This piece is about 14 feet tall. This is for scenes where the humans are interacting with it, they're getting ready to jump in it, they're gonna climb inside of it. For our maquette, Legacy Effects actually scanned the full-size suit, took it down, scaled it in the computer, and outputted it. So the details on the full-size suit are actually translated directly into the, uh, into the maquette. The maquette also includes the Steve Lane character, uh, Quaritch. As you can see by the hands in these shots, this is a very large size maquette. It's actually 22 inches tall, so it's gonna make for a pretty impressive display. Following up on our earlier announcement this year of our Disney premium format figure line, we're showing you our first installment in our villain series, as well as a couple of sneak peeks of some things from the Disney films to come. We just debuted The Evil Queen, which is our first premium format Disney villain. This is a really good example of how we've chosen to interpret these characters. These characters obviously give us a number of choices, primarily in determining what types of fabrics and what types of approaches we're going to use sculpturally or in paint to try and take the two-dimensional animated character and bring it to life in 3D. You've seen how we've taken the animation art and turned it into a real sculpture with real fabric. We've got more Disney villains on the way, we're looking at all kinds of iconic characters, including Maleficent, Chernabog, and so many others. In addition to the animated villains line, we're working on characters from the live action series, Pirates of the Caribbean, as well as some of the other great Disney classics. Uh, one of our favorites has been Rocketeer. The Rocketeer made a great mix of mechanical objects in the form of his helmet and his rocket pack, mixed in with the leather of his jacket, the fabric of his pants. Aside from the Rocketeer, we're also working on Pirates of the Caribbean. And of course, we've got to start with Captain Jack Sparrow. The design team's been having a lot of fun bringing all of his swagger and humor into the pose and attitude of the figure design. And it's a detailed figure, really complex, with a lot of layers to the costuming and other 
bits that are going to look really good in premium format with the different mediums used to represent all of what makes Jack so very interesting on screen. Transformers 2, huge at the box office this year and going to be a huge maquette very soon. We're working on Optimus Prime as a 20 inch plus maquette. The great thing about this piece is that we're taking the CG files using the actual film and outputting that into something that customers can actually hold in their hand, display in their house. So while it's not the first project that Sideshow has used digital assets to create a project with, it is one of the most elaborate we have done to date. It sort of really sets the stage for what we'll be able to do in the future. The head alone for the CG model for Optimus Prime is 1,100 pieces alone. Think about that, that's crazy. The challenge with this piece, and it's a fun one, is trying to figure out which pieces to keep separate, which to combine together. I mean, there's over you know, 30,000 pieces in the CG model alone. I mean, these CG artists went crazy with Optimus. Star Wars. We're still strong with the Force in premium format, 12-inch, life-size, diorama, and now legendary scale bus size, which is about half scale. We're doing Commander Cody off the bat, and we'll be expanding out with some of the Sith characters and other cool Jedi and more interesting characters from the Star Wars universe. The life-size bits only get better and better. The Darth Vader bust has definitely been our most ambitious undertaking for that range so far. With the exclusive version of the Darth Vader bust, you'll have the opportunity to display your dome and face mask alongside the bust itself with the Anakin portrait revealed, meaning when you take off the dome and the mask, it be nice to have somewhere to put it, so we're providing you with an extra display stand. We've been having a lot of fun watching the Clone Wars series. Uh, we really enjoyed the original animation version, but the new CGI series has just absolutely rocked. It seems to get better with every episode. We brought you Obi-Wan Kenobi in the armor based on the original animation look in the 12-inch line, and now we've brought you the Anakin figure based on the CGI series with his armor shoulder bit, and uh, we're moving forward in sort of a military-themed development track uh, around the clones that appear in the CGI series, Rex, Cody. Cody especially has been a fun one because uh, we're sort of, it's an ambitious project for us. We're trying to pull together a figure that combines both Revenge of the Sith and the CGI series in terms of display options. While most of the armor remains the same in both series, his helmets are very distinctly different, although the portrait underneath also uh, works for both. It'll be a realistic version like Anakin and Obi-Wan were to fit with your other 12-inch figures. The 2009 marks the 25th anniversary of the Ninja Turtles. Sideshow is proud to announce this license in celebration of that. What we'll be doing is a series of four maquettes capturing each character in his sort of signature pose. Most people know Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the cartoon and toys from the late 80s, early 90s. But Ninja Turtles actually started in the early 80s with a black and white comic book produced by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. The comics were black and white, but the covers were actually colored. And this is what we're basing our paint scheme off of. And you're gonna notice on our first piece, Donatello, that he's got a red bandana. Now, why does he have a red bandana? Because the original Turtles all had red bandanas in the comic book. Things are hot and heavy with Marvel Comics and Marvel movies. We're going strong with premium formats, comicettes, dioramas, legendary scale busts, life-size busts, and now half-scale maquettes. We're proud to bring you the first half-scale Marvel piece, Iron Man, based on his Mark III suit from Iron Man the movie. The half-scale Iron Man maquette, done by the guys at Legacy Effects, was a maquette done to check out the proportions of what the suit would look like when they had a full-size one on set. It's a piece that Jon Favreau owns in his, uh, in his home. You might have seen it on his Twitter page. He's very proud of it, as are we. It's absolutely stunning. It's over three feet tall. It's hard to miss. And the piece lights up for eyes and chest and just uh, is about the ultimate Iron Man collectible. Our Comiquette and premium format ranges have expanded with some of Marvel's hotties and femme fatales. The cool thing about Marvel Comics is there's tons of history. Uh, I mean, we've done a lot of stuff so far, and we've focused on characters uh, you know, some of the characters that are more popular, but we're going to focus on other characters that are popular still, but maybe not as mainstream as, say, Spider-Man or Hulk. Got a ton of cool stuff in store. We've definitely heard the cries for Colossus and Daredevil and Cyclops. If you go back into the development area of Sideshow, there's just, it's like wallpaper in some rooms, and it's just Marvel. It's pictures and characters and all these different characters, anybody you can think of. And it's just a matter of deciding which ones will be next.